recording in progress. Hi everyone, and it's uh, great to see so many of you here with us in person this evening. And uh, we also have quite a number of people joining us online and uh, in, a, in a feat that we've never succeeded in achieving before, we're actually going to try the triple whammy and record the session as well so that we can send it out to everyone as well. So let's all pray to the uh, technology gods that this is actually going to work, uh, but we, we have faith. So welcome to this start of the set planning process for you and your year 10 student. Um, it's great to meet you all. Um, I often come to the Year 7 Parent Night and look at you all and go, right, Year 10. So it's great to see you all in Year 10 um, and, and great to be starting this journey with you. And this is Leanne Hickson. I'm the Head of Senior Schooling here at Corinda State High School and Karina Doolan has started this term with us as the VET Coordinator. So we're going to take the process tonight. And it really fills me with trepidation that I've written 2022 slide and yesterday I was talking to your students about their 2024 university enrollments but that's okay. So today we're going to cover the new Queensland Certificate of Education or in the world of acronyms the QCE, uh, general and applied subjects, ATAR and what will contribute to an ATAR. We're also going to look at VET pathways and the set planning interview process. So the QCE, um, it is an expectation here at Corinda State High School that all of our students will aim towards a clean, achieving their Queensland Certificate of Education. So it's not something that you get given, it is something that you have to earn and uh, there are a number of requirements that you have to meet. So the first one is you have to have a set amount of points and the minimum amount that you need is 20 points by successfully completing your school subjects, successfully completing your VET course, and successfully completing any enrichment courses or courses that you might undertake. And the key in that sentence and all of those sentences was successfully. Uh, you can't be in them. Um, you only gain uh, pass them or complete them if you don't pass points and that's the key to that process. The next uh, requirement is that it's in a set pattern so there must be 12, a minimum of 12 points that come from either a certificate to a high world or something that you have done across all four units that you started them at unit one, you went all the way through to unit four and you were successful across all four of those units. We're looking for a set standard and that's what I've harped on a little bit about here. So successful is grade or higher in terms of our subjects or complete completion of their qualifications. And finally, each student must have a literacy and a numeracy component, which means they must successfully pass one of our math subjects or one of our English subjects for the literacy and numeracy um, in order to achieve that literacy and numeracy. <coughs> there are three types of courses that your students will undertake that the QCAA recognises. The first one are core, core courses. So these include our subjects that we offer here at school. So the general subjects and applied subjects, extension subjects, certificate two, qualifications, certificate three and four qualifications, including any training that your students might do, school-based apprenticeships, and any recognised studies that are under the category. So they're the only ones that can contribute to that core component of your student's QCE. The next rec recognised category is the preparatory component. These ones are a couple of short courses in literacy and numeracy, any certificate one qualifications and any recognised study at the preparatory level. You can have a maximum of four credits from this area. So it's no point us enrolling your student in 10 certificate ones because they actually can only count two of those, okay? And finally, it's the complementary area and we can have a maximum of eight points from here. Uh, some short courses fall under this category, some university subjects, our diploma of business comes in here 
and other complementary recognised studies. And you're probably now sitting here thinking that was really complex and I probably should be taking notes. So what I want you to think and realise is that it is my job at Corinda State High School to make sure that your student is on track for a Queensland Certificate of Education. And in the set planning process, the that we select will set them up to achieve their QCE, okay? So you don't have to worry about worrying all about that because that's what I need hair dye for. I'm the one who worries about all of that, okay? And I'll be the one who keeps track of your students and make sure they're on track for that. And I can assure you, if they're not, you and I are going to be talking. I'm going to be talking really quickly, okay? So don't, don't panic, don't stress, I've got this covered. The last one is the literacy, and as I said, uh, for our students, it'll come from their maths and English subjects and be, being successful in the maths and English subject. Yes, sure. All right, so it's really important then that your students are really strategic in how they do selections this year, all right? This is not the time to pick a subject because your friend's doing it. This is the time for it all to be about your student. So it's really important that they select subjects that they enjoy, subjects that they are good at, and subjects that are aligned to their post-school aspirations, including any prerequisites that there are for any university subjects, okay? Again, it's really important that they pick ones that are suitable for them because they have to be successful in them in order to get a QCE. So it's really important that they start thinking about that. So remember, you wanna to play to their strengths, play to their interests and play to their values because school has to be the best days of our lives, doesn't it? And so we want them to be happy when they're here with us at Corinda State High School, we don't want the next couple of years to be a miserable existence for them. And we want them to be on a pathway whereby they're setting themselves up for what they are interested in post-school. So yesterday when I sent out the email, I let you know that the subject selection handbook has gone live on our website. In order to access that, you need to go into the curriculum section You'll go then down to senior schooling and it'll sit on the right hand side of that page and it's called the 2022-2023 Senior Subject Selection Handbook. So in this booklet, you'll find all of the subject offerings that we have available at Corinda State High School um, and in the categories that I'm about to outline for you. But everything that is available to them will be outlined there. Having said that, particularly once you start looking through the VET courses and realise that there are such a wide array of them. If you look through there and you think, actually, there's not anything there that is related to basket weaving, and I think that my student has got a really good career in basket weaving and they're going to be just the best basket weaver ever. When we get to the set planning meeting, just let me know. There are so many courses out there, it is impossible for us to list them all. And so um, I can't put it into a book like the Subject Selection Handbook, but I've got a whole array of resources up my sleeve that I can point you in the right direction. So please know that if you don't see it written in there, that doesn't mean you can't do it. You just need to come and talk to me about it and I will see what I can find, okay? So there are three types of subjects available to students. The first one are the general subjects. These are the most difficult subjects that we do have in our curriculum offering. The general ones that are the ones that will contribute to the ATAR calculation. Then we have our subjects, which include the essential English and essential math subjects. These ones are more vocationally aligned, more in preparation for work and for post-school pathways into vocations. And finally, we have our vocation, education and training subjects as well. So if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about them, on this, your student's SharePoint page, so you'll need to get them to log into their, their laptops. 
get them to take you to the SharePoint page, then look for the senior schooling section. In the senior schooling section, you'll find a number of tabs and one of them will be this page that has a whole range of videos where our heads of department are talking about their subjects and what are entailed in them. At Corinda State High School, all of our students will study six subjects or six, a combination of subjects or courses to give them the maximum opportunity for gaining success. So this is the maximum opportunity for gaining success in their QCE, in an ATAR outcome if that's their chosen pathway and in any other chosen pathway that they have, whether that be to a trade, to straight to a job, to further study in vocational education. Whatever their pathway, the requirement will be that they have six avenues of study at Corinda in order to reach that. So if we look at the assessment that we will be able to, they'll be able to undertake, and we look at the general and applied subjects, we now will start talking in units, right? So no longer will we talk so much in years and years, but we'll talk in units. And the, the key component that you need to know there is our units do not align to semesters, okay? So our year 11 students are just about finished their first unit now, and they're about to roll into their second unit halfway through this term. So they've only got a couple more weeks left in unit one and they'll have their first grade, okay? So they study unit one and unit two as individual units. That means they'll go through the whole unit and at the end of that unit, they'll receive a grade. For our reporting purposes, they'll receive an A to E grade, but on their Queensland Curriculum and Assessment Authority account, and that's the body that calculates their QCE and issues their certificate, they will receive either a successful or an unsuccessful for Unit 1 and Unit 2. Okay, so we'll go through Unit 1 and Unit 2, and by the end of that, we'll have two discrete results for those units. Then we have units three and four, which go together as a pair. And so the students will then have the opportunity to get a result for unit three and four. And that is a combined result, which means the result is across both units of study and they need to be successful at the end of it in order to gain their QCE points. If they're not successful in any one of these, this is where they start losing the QCE points. And from the beginning, I tell the students that once, once they're gone, we can't get them back. And to fix it, I have to put you in more study, not less, okay? So it's really important that they are in subjects that they can, see, can succeed in from the beginning. Also to get their QCE, they must be successful at the end of unit three and four for that to be counted as core completion. So we're really looking for them to be completely successful all the way through their course of study. You also need to realise that Unit 3 will actually start at the end of their year, year 11 year. So in week four of term four, that's when the students will move in to their final two units of study. And these are the two units that contribute to their ATAR if that's the pathway that they're looking to undertake. And the reason why I'm flagging this with you so early is that whilst we might be in a restricted COVID travel season, uh, it is not the time to think it's all right, it's just the last week of term, we can take that off and go on holidays early. That might actually be an exam block or an assessment week because we're in the middle of a unit, not at the end of a semester. All right, so it's really important that you're aware that your students are no longer running on semesters once they hit next year and that their assessment timetable will be a little bit out of sync with any other students you have in the junior years, okay? So the students um, must study the, the units in their entirety. They fail. If they fail, then no results will be their ATAR or their QC calculations. Mm -hmm. And you have to realise as well that once we have made the selections, there is minimal opportunity for them to change subjects 
And once we hit unit three, there is no opportunity for change after that. The QCAA has locked us, will lock them in that course of study for the remainder of unit three and four. So if it's not quite right, their set plan, we need to fix it by the time we start unit three, which is at the end of their year 11 year. Okay. Right, in terms of assessment, uh, the, for the general subjects in year 11, it's all internal assessment. In year 12, there are three internal assessment items, or I should say in unit three and four, there are three internal assessment items. And then the fourth one is an external assessment piece, which is written by the QCAA AA, and marked by the QCAA. If your students select maths or science subjects that are general subjects, then the weighting of those external assessment exams will be 50%. For all other subjects, it'll be 25%. If they're an essential subject, so that was the essential maths and essential English, in unit one and two, they'll do all internal assessment. In unit three and four, they'll sit three internal assessment pieces. And then they'll sit one piece that we call a common internal assessment item. This one is set by the QCAA. So to every student in Queensland who's studying essential English or essential maths will undertake the same assessment piece that they have set and it'll be marked by teachers here at our school. If they're undertaking applied subjects in unit one and two, they'll be all internal assessment items. And in unit three and four, there'll be four internal assessment items. And if they undertake VET courses of study, then that'll be continuous competency-based assessment right across the four units, okay? So in order to ensure that your students are in the correct subjects, we have a list of prerequisites that our heads of department have compiled as the minimum achievement requirements in year 10 for entry into particularly our general subjects in year 11 and 12. So at the start of the year, I went to all of the year 10s and I encouraged them to do their best so that they had the maximum opportunity of getting the grades that they wanted to get into the subjects that they wanted to in year 11 and 12. So if their grades currently don't meet the minimum prerequisite and you would have gotten um, a report card emailed home just last week, then they have this term to improve their results and we will have another report card by the time you get to set planning in um, term three. So if they didn't quite get what they wanted or what they need in order to get into the subjects they think they want to go in, I would encourage you to ensure that you've made a parent-teacher interview and are touching base with your students' teachers to ensure that you know what it is they need to do in order to be successful. We will be sticking to the prerequisites in set planning there will be opportunity after that for you to reset plan if the students can improve their grades. But these are the standards and the minimum grades that your student will need to get into particularly the general subjects if that's their pathway. And you can find the published uh, prerequisites on the last two pages of the subject, subject selection handbook. They look like this. Uh, they're detailed for all of the subjects um, and, and they're really quite clear in, in what they need to achieve in order to be able to go into those. All right, so if your student is looking to go to university, then the ATAR process is the most direct pathway for them into university. So the ATAR stands for the Australian and Tertiary Admission Rank, and it replaces the OP system. It is only for entry into university. So if your student is not university bound, it is really of very little benefit for them to be ATAR eligible, particularly if they have an articulated post school pathway. There are probably a number of other subjects or VET courses that we can put them into that will give them a better preparation for their pathway other than general subjects. Only 33% of the population actually use an ATAR to apply for university entry. And if a student wants to study at university, they must ensure that they are studying the prerequisite school subjects for their course of interest. For every university subject 
in Queensland universities, a pass in an English subject will be a requirement. So this means any of our general English subjects. So English, English as an additional language or literature. To get an ATAR, they can be studying essential English, but to meet the university prerequisites, they'll need to be in one of the general subjects. There are some university courses that have science prerequisites and they'll say they need one of um, physics, chem or biology. There are a number of subjects that have maths prerequisites and courses that have maths prerequisites. And if you're looking at primary school teaching, it has a science prerequisite as well. So if your student is thinking that they are interested in university, when we get to the set planning process, it's important that we are considering that as well. So QTAC, the Queensland Tertiary Admissions Centre, is the organisation that calculates your ATAR and publishes the prerequisite requirements and the ATAR level cutoff requirements for university entry. As I was saying to the students yesterday, ATAR levels are a popularity contest as much as anything else. If a, sub, if a university course suddenly becomes popular, you can just watch it skyrocket up, up the ATAR requirements. So don't think that just because it's really high, um, you can't, it's, it's really hard to get into. It might just be a really popular course at, and the flavor of the month. And now, classic example of that at the moment is paramedicine. Two years ago, paramedicine was sitting right way down at an ATAR of 72. Suddenly it got popular. This year it's sitting right up at nearly 90. It's the same course. Had you applied two years ago, you might have got in and it's just because it's become really popular. So sometimes it's not a measure of the degree of difficulty of the course as as much it is the popularity of the course and their need to make a distinction about who gets in. So if your student is thinking that they are university bound, it's really important that they are aware of what an ATAR is, aware of QTAC and aware of any prerequisites. So to calculate an ATAR, there are two ways that your ATAR can be calculated. The first way is to be in five general subjects. The second way is to be in four general subjects and then include one either applied subject or a completed VET qualification at certificate three level or higher. That is the only way you can be ATAR eligible. So your best five subjects go towards calculating an ATAR. At Corinda State High School, we ask the students to do six so that we can allow them to have their best five in the calculation. We won't determine which their best five are. QTAC will determine which are their best five when they do the calculation and they will run the algorithm every way to ensure that they get the best result that they can possibly. So you can be assured that QTAC will use your best results to calculate the best ATAR for you. As I said, an English subject is compulsory, so you can be doing an essential English and still get an ATAR, but again, the prerequisites for university will be at that general level. An ATAR is now recognised throughout Australia, whereas the OP was only recognised in Queensland and you had to get an ATAR calculation from that. So your students are now able to apply for universities across Australia with this ATAR calculation. There is an ex external assessment piece for every general subject. And so your students will have to sit an external assessment for every general subject that they take. And it's a measure of a student's overall position in that subject compared to every other student in Queensland doing that subject and that's how it's calculated. It's a 2000 point scale, much finer scale than the OP system was. The highest ATAR that you can achieve is 99.95 and it goes all the way down to zero. If any of you had students who went through the OP system, this is a comparison of where the OP sit in relation to the ATARs and what that's looking at. And basically, 
from about a 64.95 and higher, you could expect that that would be enough to get you into some university courses. Of course, the most competitive ones will need a much higher ATAR than that. <laughs> okay. So it's our big technology test. So we're going to listen to QTAC now. Tell us about ATAR. <laughs> Queensland education will transition to a new system that aligns with other states and territories throughout Australia. The state government has entrusted QTAC to manage this important challenge. From 2020, ATAR, the Australian Tertiary Admission Rate, will replace the overall position as the primary pathway to tertiary study for Year 12 students. To be ATAR eligible, students must complete either five general subjects or four general subjects and one applied subject or vet course. English is compulsory, but there are five English subjects to choose from. A process called SCAN will then be applied. The purpose of SCAN is to prevent the unfairness that would occur if we simply added up all more subject results. And here's why it's important. Without scaling, a score of 90 out of 100 in Maths A would be the same as a 90 out of 100 in Maths B. But that doesn't make sense. We know that Maths B is more challenging than Maths A, and things get even trickier when you look at vastly different subjects. Is achieving well in art more difficult than physics? Is chemistry harder than English? What about geography and physical education? Scaling allows comparison based on the difficulty of achieving each result. Let's break it down. Scaling works by looking at how students who take a particular subject perform in other subjects. This comparison tells us something about the relative difficulty of each subject. When we examine the results against large groups of students, we can determine how hard a subject is overall compared to other subjects. Until December 2020, when the first ATARs are calculated, we can't know for certain how hard a subject will be. Some subjects may scale higher or lower from one year to the next. So it's important for students to choose subjects they enjoy, that they are good at, and that are prerequisites for the further study they want to take, rather than based on how a subject is likely to scale. Now, we've spoken a lot about the ATAR, but it's not the only path to uni. That courses and applied subjects can also give students the requirements they need. Life opportunities too. TAFE, apprenticeships, a gap year, even work. The future is in front of Queensland students, and it can be extraordinary whichever path they choose. We are all in this together, and together we'll make the transition to ATAR a positive experience for every student in Queensland. Okay, so ATAR and scaling and uh, any other prerequisite and other tertiary course information that you need can be found on the QTAC website also. The other thing that the video mentioned um, and that I've mentioned as well is that there's other ways to get to university without needing an ATAR and uh, oh, I've missed one. Sorry, let's go the non-ATAR pathway first. So if you are not aiming to get an ATAR, then you'll still sub study six subjects. So these will be applied subjects and VET subjects most commonly, but it can also include some general subjects. So it might be very relevant for a student to be in one of the general subjects if there's a line of sight through to their post school and the skills and the, and the underpinning knowledge that they'll learn in that general subject is going to assist them in their post-school pathway. But predominantly what we find is students who are not looking to get an ATAR will actually be in subjects that are aligned to their pathways and are preparing them for their post-school work or apprenticeship, study at other vet courses or cadetships. And so they're in a range of applied and vet subjects that are relevant to them. And 
ATARs aren't the only way to go to university. You can also use a VET way to get to university. So in previous years, students have been able to use the individual rank that they've achieved by studying a certificate three or higher level VET qualification. So some of our unis will allow this. UQ and QUT will no longer accept waivers. Let's give you a problem, Jake. Battery. Uh, will no longer allow school leavers, applicants to receive a standalone selection rank on the basis of a VET award. So that means if a student studies a diploma of business at Corinda State High School, then you can use that for direct entry into university. But if you're going wanting to go to UQ, you will have to wait for 12 months post the completion of your diploma. And if you're wanting to go to QUT, you'll have to wait two years post the completion of your diploma. Griffith University haven't released a position on that, but they accepted students' applications, direct entry with diplomas and with certificate threes in conjunction with general English or with an English bridging course, as did the University of Southern Queensland and Central Queensland University. Um, and AMEB qualifications are no longer recognised for university entry. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to Karina now and she's going to take you through some more VET opportunities at Karina State High School. So vocational education and training is learning that's directly related to work. And these qualifications are nationally recognised. Um, VET can take students towards an apprenticeship, a traineeship, a cadetship, a cadetship, Further vet studies and even to university. There are three um, types of vet courses available to students at Corinda State High School. Firstly, there are vet courses where Corinda State High School is the registered training organisation, the RTO, and students may enrol in any number of these vet courses. Secondly, we have VET courses with an external RTO and they are, that are funded using VETIS funding and Same students way. may enrol in only one of these. And thirdly, there are VET courses with an external RTO where the students are required to pay the full fee for service and enrolment in these are dependent on the qualification level, the location and the ability to pay fees. So these Courses can be part of our timetable at Corinda State High School or delivered externally at the location of the RTOs. In our subject selection handbook, there are the specific details for each different VET course. VETIS stands for VET in Schools and VETIS funded courses are funded by the state government and every student is allocated funding for one of these courses. On the screen are some examples of qualifications that attract the VETIS funding subsidy and students can enrol in one of these for study. I'll give you a moment to read the different courses listed on the board there. Move on as people in the room have had a moment to do that. Um, so if a student chooses to enrol in an external VET course, they'll complete their studies at the location of the external RTO and they'll be out of school one day per week. This course will contribute to their QCE and possibly their ATAR calculation. Students would need to manage their own enrolment, their attendance and study loads with of course the support from home and school. And enrolment in these external VET courses needs approval from the head of department of senior schooling, Ms. Leanne Hickson, um, and generally, this will occur during the set planning um, meeting process next term. And some of these courses do attract that better funding. School-based apprenticeships and traineeships um, are also an option. And students would start work and their training while they're at school still. They are required to do 50 days per nominal year of training. So while they'd be out one day per week of school, since there are only 40 weeks in the school calendar year, 
they would be required to commit to working on weekends and during the holidays. If this was a pathway they took. Um, and with these as well, they'd need approval from the senior schooling head of department, Ms. Leanne Hickson, um, before they were to sign up. On our student SharePoint page in the senior schooling section, under the notices section, um, we post all of the different opportunities for school-based apprenticeships and traineeships that pop up. Um, and the link on the slide will take you directly there. And I'll pass back to Ms. Hickson um, to touch base about the Career Expo. So it's a, it's a time for students to need to find out a lot of information and to assist them in this process, we are running a Careers Expo here at Corinda State High School. And that'll occur next Wednesday in the Assembly Hall. So we have approximately 30 exhibitors in attendance and that'll be running from 12 noon until 2.30. So the students will access this as part of their leadership day um, next week. But if any of you were interested, you'd be welcome to come and sign in as a visitor and access the exhibitors also, okay? Um, so that's next Wednesday in the Assembly Hall. We also have a virtual careers expo available on the Senior School and SharePoint page. Um, and it's one of the tabs that you can find there. So what we've done is we've taken all of the tertiary sectors that link with us, that are part of the expo, that we've had communication with, and we've put links to their information. So it's a kind of a one-stop shop. Instead of you having to troll through the Google, we've done that for you. And all of the links are there for you to access should your students be interested in any of those institutions. So set planning. So the students started yesterday with um, this particular talk. We've been working through uh, uh, establishing our identity and ourselves and what our strengths and weaknesses are. The HODs will start talking to the students about what subjects they have available. And we'll move through to this process of looking at uh, what subjects they'll select next year in a set planning interview. So our set planning interviews will occur in week two of term three, and all students need to undertake a set planning interview. And they need to be accompanied by a parent or a carer in the interview. The interviews will run for 20 minutes, and the students need to be actively engaging in their SLP lessons last term and this term to be well prepared for the set plan interview. It's really obvious when we get to set planning, the students who haven't done this because they're not able to answer the questions and they have obviously not done the preparation to know what it is they want to select and why we're having the discussion we are in set planning. We'll also be looking at the results from the all well tests that were emailed out to you last week and we'll be using those as one of the tools as well as the report cards and the set planning preparation to look at your subject selection in set planning for year 11 and 12. And the set planning interviews um, will culminate in the process of picking those six subjects. So the very last page of the 2022-2023 um, handbook is the subject preference form and it looks like this. So this is a tool to help you and your student refine the, your thinking before you get to set planning and uh, it uh, shows you how we will make the decision making. So in column one, we have the English subjects and you'll select one from there. In column two, the math subjects and you'll select one from there. In column three, you'll make three selections of subjects and in column four, you'll make one selection there. And of course, we will then discuss that at set planning. And if that is an appropriate pathway for your student, we will lock that into the one school process Otherwise, we'll have a discussion about what might be more suitable and come up with a plan for each individual student. The set planning interview bookings will occur through SOBs, so similar to the parent-teacher interviews. And once parent-teacher interviews have closed, we'll go through the process of setting up the booking process for the set plan interviews so that you've got plenty of time to plan when you want that interview to occur. We do have some early morning sessions and some later afternoon sessions and all the way through the day where available for bookings to be made. 
Um, request that you make one booking only. You only need to do set planning once. It's not that good a process to go through it more than once. Um, so I look forward to uh, meeting a lot of you then and um, looking at your student's plan at that time. Okay, so we've come to the point of questions. Uh, but before we go through the questions, I might just introduce you to some key people in the room. So you met Carrie Ann Smith, the deputy for year 10 um, at the introduction. Uh, Karina Doolan was the vet coordinator. I'm the head of department for senior schooling. Ashley Black is our guidance officer who looks after our year 10, 11 and 12 students. And Ms. Belinda Moorhead is the dean of students for year 10. So you might receive some emails from us and um, it's a way to put a face to a name and a name to a face. But uh, if anyone has any questions, we'll be happy to answer those. Yes. Yes. Yep. Everything on the SharePoint. Yep. Yep. So the QCE is the Queensland Certificate of Education. And uh, it says that you have achieved a minimum standard of education in Queensland. So when you look at the prerequisites for university, for example, some of them will say you need to have successfully completed year 12, and that means you've attained your QCE. When you go for job interviews, students will be looking for your QCE to indicate to them that you've met a minimum literacy and numeracy standard in order to have finished year 12. Um, when you apply for vet courses to post school, one of the things they might ask you for is a copy of your QCE so that they know that you also have a minimum literacy and numeracy standard there and they don't have to put you through LLNN testing, stuff like that. So it's a, it's a useful tool for your resume, but it's also a prerequisite for some post school pathways. Yes. <laughs> the Orwell yes. Yes, so that happened in term one. So the students spent a day in testing, just going through some general knowledge aptitude testing. That was actually career based. They had no idea, but that's what it was. <laughs> um, and last week we emailed you through the results of that. So that was a, didn't get it? No, the kids got it. Yeah, so. You need to check your junk mail because my teacher aide personally emailed all of you um, based on your student's name and your one school information. So if you didn't get it, just shoot me an email because if your email is not correct, we've sent it to the wrong place. Yeah. Who would it come from? Drew Sonta was the person who sent it to you. Okay, so if you were like, who's this person uh, and delete, go back and find it from your deleted files. It is a mail provider issue, it seems, that it, it does pick up our at eq.edu.au address for some. So if you've received an email from us previously, it, it might come through. You can go into your mail provider and just stop that from blocking, but you can set up rules that say all from at eq. Don't ask me how to do it, um, but there's certainly people at IT that can help with that, or they can move your child. <laughs> Yes. So if they sign up as a school based apprentice, it means that they start their work and training at school. So they start their first year apprenticeship then. Um, and so they go out one day a week and they actually get paid. So um, the assessment pieces in essential subjects are all weighted evenly because it, it doesn't really have that much of a percentage because they end up only with a, a letter grade. They don't end up with um, a percentage grade at the end of those ones. So it's 25%, it's yeah. yeah. And it's not as scary as it sounds. 
our students are, have succeeded quite well on the CIAs and our staff are well versed in them and have prepared them quite well for those assessments. Any other questions? Yep. Um, you mentioned why students go through the hotel. What was the outcome? What was the question you were doing about scaling? Yeah, so our students did pretty well. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I, I guess it's the first year. And in terms of scaling, it doesn't matter what happened last year because your students' cohort will be individual and different. Um, you know, we could probably put some predictions on some of the harder subjects that are more difficult and less students do, like specialist maths, of course, scaled well. Um, and some of the easier subjects were further down, further down the line. Um, as for the variation in between that, it was really quite fine. Uh, in terms of results overall, we had more students in that OP1 range than we had in the OP system. So more of our students got higher HRs. We had more students achieve in that top band where previously it would have been an OP1 to five outcome. We had more students in the 85 and above. And then we had more students as well achieving the 15 and above as well. So in terms of scaling for our students, I think we did actually a little better in the new system. And as we get to know it better and can help your students work through it, I'm sure they're going to do better by the time we've had our, we're up to our third crack at it. So that'll be great. The other thing that we have in process to help the students in year 11 and 12 is we have academic coaching. Um, so in year 11, at the end of unit one, all of your students will be assigned an academic coach. So that's a member of our senior leadership team. Uh, and they will um, monitor the students and meet with them at the end of key reporting junctures for units one through to four. And we'll talk to them about how they're going, how they can improve their results. Are they on track for a QCE? How they can lift and stretch to get the results that they want? Is there anything else they can be doing? So there'll be a number of monitoring sessions as well for them so that we can support them to get the best result. Um, when we surveyed our year 13s this year, uh, the, overwhelmingly a lot more of them had ended up in the pathway that they wanted to. There are far less that we're supporting because they haven't ended up in anything. Um, so I think that's a really encouraging sign from the new system as well. Mm -hmm. Right, well, if there's nothing else for any of us, you can ask any of us a question if you've got a burning question for anyone else. I think we're happy to stay around. But I promised uh, the principal I'd get to.